Eric Benet is known for his good looks and soulful voice. Behind the scenes, he's a doting husband and father, but his journey to finding his perfect match hasn't been easy. Don't forget, you can gain access to this audio and one unreleased super messy video per month on the RRG Patreon. Details are down below in the description box. Now, let's get into how Eric went from being heartbroken to ending a disastrous marriage to finally finding true love. In December 1991, Eric's girlfriend, Tammy Marie Stauff, gave birth to their daughter, India. Eric and Tammy broke up some time later. They settled into their roles as co-parents in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Eric would make time to see his daughter every weekend. On April 24, 1993, Tammy lost her life in a car accident. She was just 25 years old. Eric was severely impacted by the loss and later dedicated the song, While You Were Here, in honor of her. He told The Independent following Tammy's passing, he was left with feelings of guilt, remorse, bereavement, and depression. Hearing his daughter call out his name when he came home from work every day was the only thing that kept him going. In an interview with Mocha Man Style, Eric said he knew he had to pull himself together. He was thankful to have his family around to help him out as he worked shifts at UPS while also serving as a studio engineer for local Milwaukee bands. Finally, his own musical creativity began to shine through. He, a friend, and some family members formed a band called Benet. They recorded three songs and sent them to Warner Brothers and were signed to a record deal right away. That would be the first of many recording contracts for Eric, who later branched out to be a solo artist. His fans fell in love with his 70s-influenced soul music, and his first single, Spiritual Thing, was a top 10 hit. Though he was busy with fatherhood and making music, he found enough time to start a relationship with model Julia Riley. According to the Evening Standard, they started getting close in 1995, and Eric was so hooked, he dedicated his entire 1996 debut album to her. Things didn't last, but that wasn't the last of Julia. We'll get into that in a bit. During a 1997 concert at the House of Blues, Eric met the beautiful actress Halle Berry. Halle told People magazine there weren't any sparks at first, maybe because she was still tied up in a situation with actor Shamar Moore. But either way, she and Eric exchanged email addresses. When Halle and Shamar broke up, she began swapping emails with Eric for more than a year. She finally realized that this was the real deal. Three years later, the couple got engaged at the Cleveland premiere of Halle's movie, Introducing Dorothy Dandridge, and tied the knot in January 2001. Even though they were both at the top of their respective careers, they enjoyed the simpler things in life, like hanging around the house, watching movies, and spending time with Eric's daughter. This was the beginning of the perfect little family, or so we thought. A year into their marriage, Eric spent two days with his ex-girlfriend, Julia Riley. How do we know? Because the Daily Mail claimed there were photographs of him leaving Julia's Milwaukee apartment. And where was Hallie during all of this? She was in Los Angeles preparing for the Oscars. Julia confirmed she slept with Eric during his visit, and an insider told the Evening Standard that Julia and the R&B singer had a very deep bond. The source said, Eric has known Jules for years. She drives him wild. The insider added that Eric felt he was constantly in Hallie's shadow, and Julie was there for him when Hallie wasn't. It also came out that Eric had never completely felt comfortable with Hallie, and she was allegedly moody, selfish, and always too tired for intimacy. Eric made it back to L.A. in time to accompany Hallie to the Oscars, where she made history as the first black woman to win the Best Actress Award for her role in Monsters Ball. Days later, news of Eric's alleged affair hit the tabloids. A friend close to Hallie said, Hallie is absolutely shocked and gutted. She can't understand why Eric would hurt her and India like this. The insider also said that Hallie had previously warned Eric that if he fooled around, he would be out. In 2003, Eric finally came clean about his marriage. According to the Daily Mail, he admitted they were facing a crisis, but he was determined to be with his wife. He said, I am so in love with Hallie and we are committed to each other, our marriage and our love. Hallie appeared to be standing by her man as well. 
She said she was going to stick with him through the tough times. She told Oprah Winfrey Eric admitted he had engaged in multiple affairs and he agreed to go to treatment for intimacy addiction. Eric told People magazine that Hallie and her mom gave him the idea to go to rehab in order to save their marriage. He later told the magazine he was never intimate with anyone else while he was married to Hallie. He said he only went to treatment because he thought it would save their marriage. He added, I went and heard other people's stories and realized this is really not my struggle. But Julia was back and ready to spill more juicy details. She said Eric had sent her a message saying he loved her. She also said Eric told her that soon after he got married to Hallie, he knew he had made a mistake. He wasn't happy and he, quote, felt uneasy. In October 2003, Hallie and Eric announced their marriage was over. The divorce was finalized in January 2005, and by that point, Eric said he and Hallie hadn't spoken in more than a year. Looking back on their marriage, he said they both went into the union with their own issues. He called it the perfect storm for things to go wrong and compared it to the Titanic. Eric said after getting divorced, he coped by going to therapy, leaning on his faith, and relying on his family. In 2007, Eric gave love another chance. He was at a Los Angeles Fashion Week party when he met a woman named Manuela Testolini. According to People magazine, they chatted at the bar about her charity work and her life. They began dating, and after a couple of months, she told him she was going through a divorce. Eric said, her name is Testolini, so for some reason I thought she was married to some Italian guy. One day, Eric was driving her to the airport, and she gave him some other details about her ex. Eric finally asked her, who is this guy? And that's when Manuela laughed and said, Prince. Eric was shook, and the fact that he was dating Prince's ex made him step his game up. He said normally he would invite the women he was dating to hang out with him at the studio, but he knew Manuela wouldn't be impressed with his tiny little studio. None of that even mattered to Manuela. They dated for a few years, and in November 2010, Eric planned a romantic dinner for them. He sang her a song he had dedicated to her. Then he got down on one knee and proposed, and she said yes. According to ABC, they celebrated their engagement in Egypt. They were married in July 2011 in Newport Beach, California, in front of guests, which included Samuel L. Jackson and Niecy Nash. The couple had a lovely surprise as well. Manuela was pregnant. She gave birth to their baby girl, Lucia Bella, in December 2011. They welcomed their second daughter, Amora Luna, in July 2014, right before their third wedding anniversary. In a 2018 interview with Mocha Man Style, Eric said Manuela was a great partner that he could share a lot of the heavy load with, which is necessary when raising children. And he is happy and more in love than ever. He said that when he's not performing, he's focused on being the best husband and the best daddy he can be. Let us know your thoughts on Eric Benet's dating history, and thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.